So welcome to the Canada 150 website and this web tutorial. This tutorial will give you a three-part overview of using the site. It'll look at navigating, finding content, and personalizing the site a little bit. The first thing we're going to look at is navigating. Now here we are in the home page that you'll see after you log on. And just to the left here you'll see a communities box. Now the site is organized by communities. That's the name for the different kinds of spaces by topic, by theme that will exist in the site. So if you click on any one of those communities, you can go to the information that's relevant. So here we can see pre-conference information. If we click on that, we go to the pre-conference information community. And you'll get that particular set of information related to the topic. Now the site's organized as a hierarchy. So for every community, there can be sub-communities related to that overall topic. And here we see another communities box with the different sub-communities listed, and we can select any of those. So here we go to virtual tour under the pre-conference information community. And you can see uh, uh, a little tour of the clear space environment. Now another way that you can navigate is to use the breadcrumb trail here at the top. That breadcrumb trail shows you how you've navigated the hierarchy to get to where you are, and you can click at any point in it to go back to where you've been. So here we've gone back to pre-conference information. Let's try it again. We'll go to FAC, and the breadcrumb trail updates, and you can use it to go back to any spot in which you were. Another way, in fact the final way I'd like to show you to navigate the site is this top navigation bar, this top menu bar. You see it has a lot of different kinds of options. And the option that we're most interested in is the, uh, the browse button. This is in fact my favorite way of navigating the site because this top navigation bar is always available and it gives you all kinds of specific content, so discussions, documents, all kinds of things that you need. And you'll see there that all the communities are, and their hierarchy are listed. You can click on any point to get to where you want to be. So in sum, navigating the site is pretty easy. You can use the communities box to find content you're looking for. You can use the breadcrumb trail to go back to where you've been. And you can always use that top navigation bar, the top menu, and the browse function. So the next thing we'd like to look at is uh, finding content in the community. Finding content is, again, pretty simple. You can just use the tabs in any specific community to find content you're interested in. So here we are in pre-conference information, and uh, let's suppose we're interested in all the content that's available in this community. You can just click on the All Content tab, and you can see a couple of posts that have come up. If you're just interested in blog posts, you can click on that particular tab, and a blog post comes up here about Canada 150 in the news in an article in The Citizen. Remember that uh, all of this, this content is related to that specific community. So subcommunities can have different content. And uh, if you want to go back to the main page that you see, remember to click the Overview tab. And that'll show you the main page for that particular community. The so finding content, again, is pretty simple. You can just navigate around using the tabs, and the tabs will show you different kinds of specific content relevant to the work that you're doing or whatever it is that you're interested in. So you can see all the content or just specific things that you want to look at. So finally, let's look at personalizing the site a little bit, and we'll start by creating some content, by actually creating a new document that other people will be able to see on the site. So here we are under FAC, and uh, we look, a number of people have posted different things. So you'll see that there's an invitation here to post your question, so why don't we go ahead and do that. We'll start our own discussion on this page. And once more functionality becomes available and you, you're able to create your own documents and other kinds of content, blog posts and so on, you'll always do this the same way. You'll use the actions box here on the right hand side and what we're looking for is start a discussion. So you click on start a discussion and a simple text editor comes up. So this will be very familiar to people from email or from word processing. and It's a fairly robust and easy to use text editor. So you, for any document, what you'll do is you'll type in the subject, the title, the name of that document. And then in the text editor itself, you'll be able to type in any text that you want, much like you would do in any word processor. 
you type in your text and you have a lot of ability to change that text. So you can change the font size, you can uh, italicize, you can bold the text, you can underline the text. Uh, there's the ability to use bullet points and those kinds of things if you want as well. If you're feeling kind of happy that day, you can even put a smiley in, let people know that you feel pretty good about what you've written. And if you go down to the bottom, you can see that you can attach files so you can upload a picture or a PowerPoint and you can tag your document as well by subject to let other people know what you've written about. So finally, let's take a look at modifying some of your preferences in your profile. If you look in the top navigation bar here, you'll see your name and your icon. And if you click on that, it'll bring up your profile. So here, this brings up our profile. You can see that there isn't a lot here right now. So let's change that. Let's update your profile and set your preferences a little bit. So if we go to the right hand side here, you can see the actions box again. There are some different actions listed. And the one we want is edit preferences. This will bring up your preferences page, and you can set a few different things. If you want to set your language, the language in which the site appears to you, you can do that through this dialog box. There's a little drop down, and you can select either English or French. You can also set the email notifications about content you're interested in. So how often you get notified about what it is that you're interested in on the site, it's all up to you. And we've gone back to the main profile page here, and we want to update the profile, I think, a little bit. So let's, uh, let's post a picture in that profile. Again, we'll go to the right-hand side here, the Actions box. And this time, we'll set it, select Edit Profile. And that'll bring up your profile editor here. You can do all kinds of things, like uh, changing how your name appears, your title, provide all kinds of information for people. You can also enter in the expertise, so the areas of knowledge that you're interested in or where you know something to let your fellow participants know what, what kinds of topics you have a particular knowledge base on. Now the box we want to use for this tutorial is your image. And if right beside that you click the browse button, you see a wonderful picture of me. You just select it, click open, and your image is listed as that particular image. So make sure you hit save whenever you change anything on your profile to keep the changes. And now we look and the profile's been updated with this fantastic picture. So in sum, personalizing the site uh, is really what it's all about. You can put up content using the action box. You can set your language, you go into preferences, and you can update your profile with any information that you want that's relevant to you. So I hope this first tutorial was useful for you, and I look forward to seeing you around the site.